The most important thing for science is that when I went there for the first time in 99 with a small rubber boat and not even knowing the depths of the lake and it get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and then I took a gravity core and what you can see here that when I took the core out you have had what we called a waft layering that means you have one layer for summer, one layer for winter, one layer for summer, one layer for winter etc. And that's the best you can have um, as a paleoclimatologist uh, because uh, such sediments give very precise uh, data uh, and uh, information on climate change up down to a sub-annual uh, chronological scale. And you see that the top of the core is completely undisturbed and consisting only of, of algae, which are still uh, drizzling down while we are uh, here together. The uh, sedimentation goes on and provides a new record for the, most re for the last years. And this uh, made... Um, was good enough for a science cover story and uh, to cut a long story short uh, the analysis of uh, pollen data and several other data were clearly indicating that that there was a very gradual desiccation of the Sahara during the past 6,000 years uh, from a fully developed savanna vegetation uh, over some sort of Sahelian type vegetation to the present day uh, to, to some desert vegetation until even this uh, disappeared and uh, there was nothing left but some oasis um, flora around the lake and this is in clear contrast uh, to the assumption of my friend uh, Peter, uh, who was claiming that uh, this aridification of the Sahara happened very quickly within decades. And the analysis, detailed analysis of this core uh, showed that there's really not a single year missing in this record. And that's why we returned there in 2010 with some heavier equipment uh, and working uh, uh, for a long time uh, under quite uh, high temperatures to extract the longest core, not only of the Sahara or, or even Africa, but probably on Earth where we have 16 meters of the subannually laminated deposits, um, which uh, I consider as some sort of Rosetta Stone for paleoclimatology of the Sahara and uh, uh, there's uh, lots of uh, publications in the pipeline, so there's hardly any other comparable site on this. And of course, these lakes were up to 100 meters higher than today because there is former lake deposits on top of the surrounding uh, table hills, uh, which uh, give information on the former extent, which, for example, uh, you see here in Lake Ewa was much, much uh, 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 bigger than, than what's left uh, today. And apart from science, uh, usually our counterparts in Africa, they are less interested in paleoclimate than in mineral deposits or in that case in an initiative I took uh, 15 years ago to get these, uh, these lakes listed as, as a World Heritage Site. And this is what's happened. That's why we got I got with my colleagues decorated as Knights of Chad by the Chadian president and even all the local people and the local hierarchy are very happy because nobody, even most Chadians, have never heard about these lakes. Nobody ever went there and now they are the first first World Heritage uh, natural site uh, in one of Africa's largest country and there's already lots of improvements for the live, daily life of the people 